Okay, so we're continuing this project. Uh, I removed the booster here. And now I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I, there were a couple lines coming up from the bottom. Uh, the original hydraulic lines. More than long enough. You can see down here, this bracket is where the proportioning valve is going to mount. And so I have this one long enough. This is the one I'm going to finish here. You can see I'm starting to put the flange on the end of this. I'm going to try to do a double flange, although it doesn't work with crap. So that's it. There's another line that's going to come in from over here that I extended so that I could wrap it around the booster a little better. Uh, next... Uh, there's a line from the back, which I've already put a, um, a flange on that, or a, a flare, I should say. That is what we're doing. So that's going to be four. Yeah, one, two, three, and then this one coming across the top that needs to be bent. The cool thing about the 3 16 inch lines is that you can just bend them by hand. You really don't need the special tool, although I have the special tool. Okay, so there's one trick uh, you have to be aware of is you need to pull the metal. This is just basically a spring that wraps around your hydraulic line to protect it. So you need to pull this all the way up and then cut it off with some sort of trimmer. See this one, I probably didn't get far enough up because I can't get my tool. This one is down the proper length because I've already finished this one. And you need to get the tool under here in order to create the flange. So you need to pull this up. So I'm going to have to try to straighten this out and then slot, uh, take this off, straighten this out, pull this up, the spring farther up so that I can get my tool around here. So I have two problems here is I have a bent hydraulic line that's not allowing me to shove this down any further. Second one is that this spring needs to be cut off somewhere. Of course, you can't cut this line. The other thing is uh, the ends of these springs can get quite nasty when you cut them. So be aware of that. So what I did is uh, you pull this spring up as high as you can get it, and then you bend it over. And then uh, you go back and you try to clip it off as close as you can right in here. Okay, so I have it all plumbed up. Uh, the... The whole thing is plumbed up now. I just need to get the last two connections, but all the brake lines are attached. All right, so now I have everything uh, plumbed up completely. And also, I have attached the booster from the back. Next thing to be sorted is the vacuum lines, which I think I have that figured out also. I think there's a port right there that I'm going to use. And then I think the climate control switch uh, comes off of either here or there and then gets moved to here, I believe. So I need to go buy some vac, uh, basically a uh, uh, fuel injector hose to go from this port uh, back to that port. Just take that plug out, that's my plan. Oh, he here, this is the, uh, um, the climate control. Uh, this thing down here gets moved over to here. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so the other thing I've done already, here, I'll give you a little zoom in here, is I've installed the pedal. So, up here on the pedal, there's a cross. This is the axle that I was talking about earlier. Right in here. This axle, there's a nut. There's a um, 
over here. I think it's a 15 millimeter. I installed that and at the same time I replaced the clip that I showed you earlier right in here and then there's a uh, brake pedal sensor that bolts onto the back up in here so that's been installed so now the brake pedal is somewhat working still need to attach the entire steering column as you can see it's still laying on the seat so all right so now i've i've put my intake manifold back on and uh that just consisted of these four bolts, one, two, three, and then there's one behind the coil back in here. I put a 115 inch-pounds of torque on those four bolts, and then there's four bolts that hold on the coil, one, two, three, four. Put those on, added back on this bolt up here, and then there's one that's all the way in the back behind the uh, intake manifold back in that area. Now I'm going to move on to the steering column. Okay, the, the other thing that needed to be done was to add this vacuum line. It's a little dark. Um, that runs from the booster here. So this thing runs from the booster to the back of the upper intake manifold. There was a cap on that previously, and I removed the cap. And then I put that cap on top of this uh, outlet here to block this port. Uh, the only remaining thing that I haven't done is this, which on a manual car runs to the heater controls so I have to figure out uh, where that's located it's supposed to be located um, back here and there is there is a vacuum line that runs off of here but it is not the one that I expected it to be you can see I have Let's move on to the steering column. Here's the steering column. There's two of the mounting locations for it. And the other two are located down in here. Let's see if we can get some better light on that. So they're right there. So this is the steering column assembly. I'm going to attempt to put that back on. There are four bolts that hold it on. One, two. Uh, let's see. Yep. Three. And then four. Let's see, my flashlight's point to it right there. The other thing you need to do is to attach it to this that it attaches to the spline which is right in there so i'm gonna have to slide this over that probably before i attach these two bolts on there uh, looks like there's a some sort of plastic guide here
this is everything back together is not running not removing the uh, environmental uh, vacuum line that goes to the heater control I left that on and I just use this vacuum uh, line from here to here uh, and then I plug the rest uh, it seemed to work okay the hardest part about this whole process was bleeding the brakes hadn't done a lot of brake work before I started this and the problem was when you changed out your master cylinder and the uh, combination slash proportioning valve down here you end up with a lot of air in your lines and so you have to take uh, quite a bit of time to bleed them so I ended up getting a, a vacuum a power vacuum bleeder just kept bleeding it until the air was out of lines and then I finally got a nice stiff pedal working on both sides uh, engine still has a little miss car has been sitting for a long time at least five six years I'm sure it needs a tune-up but now at least the brakes work